Hello, welcome back. This is the MeRC channel, and I'm Dave. And as promised, we're going to be doing the auto tune on the Brain FBV Radex flight controller. And this is in the Aero Scout plane, same as last time, where I did the auto trim. So this is a follow up on the previous video. So let's get started. We'll just go in and look at the settings in iNav. So let's go ahead and set a switch up on the radio for auto tune. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. And we're going to go to the modes tab. And I also have an arm switch up here on channel 5. But we're going to be setting down here the auto tune. And that's right here. So I've already set it up. You just hit add range and then you go ahead and pick your channel right here and for my radio is channel 9 and I have a switch right here and you can see auto mode. auto mode bounce up into that line. Now it's a three position switch so when I go to the middle position auto tune is on as well as all the way auto forward mode. so that's just the way I have it. You could use a two position switch. Okay so the switch is all set up and we're ready to go and then you can just click save when you're done setting it up. Okay, let's check our PIDs before we run auto-tune. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. And then go to PID tuning. And here's what we have right now. So we got 87050 for the roll, 87060 for the pitch and 107060 for the yaw. Although I found out later that the rudder was giving me a lot of trouble as far as counteracting my turns and making the plane fly funny, so I changed this to zero, but that was later. going on here? Arming protocol. Confirm GPS before launch. Oh, it's still going. I thought the motor had stopped. <laughs> I don't know what, whether it was really stopped or just, uh, I couldn't hear it. All right, I turned auto mode off. Can you find it? Am I going too fast? Oh, went off again. So I landed because the motor cut off again. The other time I was able to rearm it, but that time I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I can tell where it's aimed better that way. Yeah, you even got a mic in there, huh? Yeah. 
confirm GPS before launch. Really got to use the rudder on a day like this. Set auto mode again. Auto tune. Yeah. Yeah, it's always right in there. Okay, I didn't disarm it, but it did hit the ground. <laughs> well, I'll go ahead and see if I can save the, the PIDs. Anyway, better some than none. I just want to see what it looks like. So where did it land? behind me there. So now that we've completed AutoTune, let's go ahead and check our PIDs again. Just connecting the USB cable. Now we'll go ahead and connect. Go to PID tuning and you can see that the values changed in certain columns. The first column here you can see that it actually went from 8 down to 6 and 8 down to 7. This one remained the same. This one went from 7 up to 12 and that went from 7 up to 16. And then over here, this used to be 50, and now it's 55. And this used to be 60, and now it's 73. So that's what was affected. And I found out later, like I said, that I made the 10 a 0 just to get the rudder to stop counteracting my turns, which wasn't very nice. It was working the way it's supposed to as far as keeping the yaw stable, but it was affecting how I could turn the plane. So making that 0 seems to help. Okay, so that turned out to work, at least on my second flight, and it was uh, an experience, I can say the least. One thing I want to keep in mind is the... So I bet you thought I was going to talk about the fail-safe problem, but actually I was about to talk about the rudder. However, since we're here talking about the fail-safe, I did take out the Easy UHF Nano Receiver and put in a four-channel light, which is a little more robust, I also put a more robust antenna on. This is a dipole that sticks up from the top and through the bottom, giving me probably better reception. I also set up the failsafe itself so the throttle doesn't cut off. It doesn't land. Instead, it tries to return to home. So that ought to help too. One more thing is I added a filter capacitor right here on the line to the battery to try to cut out some more noise. This cap actually came with the kit and the capacitor was supposed to solder up here on the input from the battery on the board, but I just put it down here instead. Still does the same thing. So I got all three of those mods going for me. Next time we try it, I hope the failsafe works better. And now back to you, Dave. The rudder was giving me trouble, and I'll probably do another video on that, because what was happening is because there was P-gain on the rudder, when I tried to make a turn either left or right, the rudder would try to level the plane off, so if I went like left, it would try to make the plane go right, which is the way the feedback on the flight controller is supposed to work for the rudder, but it doesn't work very well for flying, so I think I'm going to make another video where I turn the P gain down to zero on the rudder, so that we can have more of an airplane-like feel instead of a quadcopter-like feel. Great for quadcopters, not good for planes. So I'll do another video and I'll explain and maybe give a demo of what the rudder does in the situation when you're trying to bank turns 
and I'll show you what the rudder actually does when it actuates and then we'll go out and fly it without that on and see if it does any better okay so we'll see you next time if you enjoyed this and you're not subscribed please subscribe I would appreciate that and you can leave comments under the video if you want and we'll see you next time happy flying